Hey guys, it's coming in my review for Westworld Season 3, Episode 2, The Winter Line. And guys, I was obviously pretty hyped for this episode. As you guys know, I really loved last week's premiere. I thought that it was really different. I thought that it was moving the show in a very fresh direction. And I was very excited to see how this episode would turn out. And I'll say right now... This episode was really different from what I was expecting it to be. Um, and for a while, I wasn't really sure if I liked what they were doing. But I have to say, at the end, it really won me over. And I'm really impressed by where this show is going, if it's going where I think it's really headed. Um, but we're just getting to right now. So obviously, the main thing going on in this episode uh, all has to do with Maeve. We got the brief glimpse at the end of last week's episode. This episode is almost squarely focused on her. And uh, one of the things that, like I said, I'm really loving about the season, I know I said it last week, but one of the things I'm really happy about is that we have so few characters to focus on so we can get episodes like this where it only is focusing on one or two storylines an episode. We don't need five storylines in every single episode, which is good. It gives us a lot more time to focus on just these specific characters. And I have to say, though, what they were doing with Maeve at first, I really wasn't a fan of. I didn't like, you know, the way this began. I'm fine with Maeve being in, you know, a Westworld type, you know, this war world of sorts, this place that she's in that's like a World War II setting. I think that's really cool. It's different. It's exciting. It's something we haven't seen before. What I didn't like at first is us seeing characters like Hector and Sizemore again, people that I thought were pretty much better off dead because they had really good send-offs, particularly Sizemore. Um, I was very upset about, which I'll get into, but the way they started things off with Hector, I just wasn't really a big fan of because it felt like they just brought him back to essentially kill him off again. But I did like where they took this, where he didn't remember Maeve at all. He was kind of stuck in his own narrative in that way. It's kind of reminiscent of Dolores and Teddy, how when Dolores was starting to figure things out, Teddy was still in his narrative, and he never really broke free of that narrative. He always stayed loyal to her in that way, um, and that was his main sort of narrative, so it's kind of reminiscent of that, and I just wasn't a big fan of where they were really taking this story overall. I didn't really like the way that was all going down, especially where it ends up going after this whole sort of... Um, you know, we're introduced to War World, which I did think was really cool. I like the whole setting and the different, you know, the cars and things like that. It's different from what we've seen before. Um, but I mainly had two big problems with the first half of this episode is one, how are these characters alive? Like Sizemore, for example, I did not buy the fact that he somehow survived. Like you, you just, you can't survive what Sizemore went through. He was shot like 20 times and you're telling me that they, they just missed his heart. Like that's just, that's completely implausible to me. And so I knew right off the bat that I was not liking that, but I also didn't buy it because after all that Westworld's gone through, why would this park even be open? We saw last week that scene with the Charlotte host and all these, like, you know, this board meeting of sorts where they're talking about privatizing Westworld. So it just, it really threw me off in that way uh, with what they were trying to do there. And there were so many things that just weren't really working for me here. Um, again, whether it was Maeve's inability to reel Hector in because he's tied to his own narrative in that way, or her and Sizemore, who is just acting really different. He was acting really out of character in the first half of this episode. You know, it seemed like he was, um, you know, happy with what he, he, you know, was happy to be back, but you, you can tell right off the bat that there's just something off about this size more. He's not acting like the way he used to. He's way more flirty towards Maeve, which we know the real size more was not. And that I think they did a really good job with the way they kind of deceived you into believing that this could potentially be real, but also kind of clue you into the fact that, yeah, something's off here. The one thing that very much made me realize, okay, something's not right, is when we had the scene with Lutz and Sylvester, and they're not recognizing her at all. They don't notice Maeve, they don't try to help her out, which was weird considering that the whole thing in season two was that they were going to bring Maeve back because they felt that she was worth saving. She had proven her worth in that way. They went on this whole quest with her. Um, 
So it was weird to me that they just suddenly did not recognize her, and I didn't really like that very much at all. So when it's eventually revealed that this is all essentially a, um, you know, that this is all essentially an illusion of sorts and that nothing that's going on is actually real, that I absolutely loved. I love the way they pulled back the curtain there and I was much more I was much more on board with that idea, considering, again, that I just didn't like the fact that some of these characters were alive. I'm much more into the idea of a different Sizemore, like a fake Sizemore of sorts, and I'm interested in seeing where they're going to go with him, because it's clear that he has these very deep feelings for Maeve and things like that. I'm not entirely sure where that's all going to go, or if we're even going to see him again, considering the way that this episode ended. But And I knew that something was off about Sizemore, more right away when he was telling her that like you need to find your daughter I was like I don't like this at all because it had seemed th that at the end of the season two finale that Maeve had realized that that reality was not real that was a fantasy and that she needed to move on from that because her daughter was happy elsewhere her daughter was happy with her family and so when Sizemore said I'm gonna help you find your daughter I did not like that idea but I liked that that is the narrative that they set for him that he isn't actually being you know um sincere that is just part of the narrative and that's not actually the main goal here. I think that actually is very interesting. And so again, that's another thing that I'm glad turned out to be fake, that turned out to not be an actual plot point, because I really was not in the mood for a retread. That is the one thing this show has failed to do so far, is be a retread of things. Even season two, which had similar beats, found a way to do something different, and this season is all about breaking new ground, so I would have been really pissed if they would have gone that direction, so I'm really glad that at the end of the day they decided not to, because I think that is far more intriguing than what they were initially setting up there. I like that the rest of this was Maeve basically being the smartest person in the room the entire time, her realizing that nothing that's going on here is actually real, and that whatever she does, she can always survive this, and she can get out of this somehow, because it's just not real in that way, um, and I love, you know, I love when she is with Hector again, and she's just going through the same thing, because she knows it's gonna happen, so I like that we were kind of free of that in this episode, because that's something that I know has, has really annoyed a lot of people. I personally have not been that annoyed by it, because I feel like the show's always intriguing, but what I really like the Westworld is doing this season is that we are getting answers very quickly. This feels like something that would normally be a season-long mystery. You know, what's going on with Maeve? Why is her narrative so confusing? So by pulling the rug out right off the bat, it gives us this sense of where her narrative is going. It's something different. It kind of takes, similar to the first episode, it takes us into uncharted territory with this character. Um with us realizing that all of this was essentially a, you know, it wasn't real in that way. It was this fake world, all built seemingly by this character of Serac, who I am very intrigued by. I'm very excited to see where he goes. And I actually failed to mention that, um, the person that Dolores killed, um, you know, the person that drugged her and things like that and then turned to a host, before he died, his last words actually were Serac. So they did a really good job of setting up who this character potentially is. And you can see that he's someone who he's really waging war against Dolores. He's very feel, fear, uh, fearful of her in that way. And he feels that Maeve, who he originally thought was the enemy, is the person that he needs to take her down. And we can see what I like is that Maeve is not at all on board with this, and that goes very well with her character. Maeve has always been someone about independence. She doesn't like people controlling her in that way. I mean, even in this episode alone, when she goes to, um, the guards of Westworld, and they're confused that she's not going by her narrative. She says, oh, I have, you know, you haven't been controlling me for a long time. She feels that power in that way. So the fact that Serac is now basically forcing her to fight Dolores, I'm really interested in seeing where this is going to go. It seems like this is a foregone conclusion at this point. Like, she can't back out of this. Like, he needs her. And so I'm not entirely sure what's going to end up happening there. You know, he talks about how their paths are going to cross again. So I'm really excited to see 
where that storyline's gonna go. But like I said, this went from a story that I really wasn't on board with at first and wasn't really into to something that I think is far more compelling now. I love this idea that Maeve is heading to a new direction. My only question is... Considering that in the main titles, at least, they said that Simon Quarterman is still a series regular, how are we going to see the Sizemore again if it's not actually real, if it's all just a fantasy in that way? Um... I'm not entirely sure how that's all going to go because we, we, you know, we know this is all a hallucination now. So is he actually out there? And what I was especially confused by was Ciroc talks about how, oh, you killed my machine. So I'm wondering, like, are there some things here that are real? Because I'm, I'm not entirely sure how this all works, but... I guess we'll get more into it. I'm very intrigued, but I think Vincent uh, Casal, I think is how you pronounce his name, he did a really good job of making this character very intriguing, but also kind of showing the dark side of this character, the fact that he is very controlling in this way. He likes to get his way, and it's kind of reminiscent of Ford, where, like, what he says goes, and uh, it's a really good direction for Maeve because she still is not in control of things, and so I really like the way that was all going for sure. All right, but the other part of this episode, of course, focuses on Bernard and also the character of Stubbs, and I loved this for a couple reasons. One, because I really like where Bernard is going, where he is just so persistent on stopping Dolores. He knows that it's his duty to do so. He doesn't even really know what she's planning. He just knows that Dolores is up to no good and that she has grown far too powerful and he needs to track down Maeve to try to, um, you know, to try to stop her as soon as possible. And I'm looking forward to seeing those two paths cross in that way. But I also love it because the character of Stubbs, Luke Hemsworth, I don't think has ever been better than he was in this episode. And it's mainly because, I've said this before, when it comes to Westworld, there are some characters the show has done an excellent job, but the one thing I think they've always struggled with are some of these human characters. Not Charlotte, not Sizemore, but characters like Elsie and uh, Carl Strand last season, and Stubbs are, you know, characters that the show just simply did not know what to do with. They just kind of felt like they were there. Um then that really changes this season by having Stubbs as a host, which I don't think is a retread. I've heard people say, oh, that's a complete retcon that doesn't make any sense. I feel like there were always signs because Stubbs was always protective of the host. He never tried to put them in harm's way. So I feel like him realize, knowing now that he's a host, again, something that the show doesn't need to send a whole season revealing, which I'm glad about. Um, we just know right off the bat, yes, he is a host. He was suicidal in that way, and that his main goal is to protect all the other hosts, um, I think is an excellent idea. I love where they are uh, going with that. And I also really love the partnership of these two because I think they just work so well together. It kind of makes me wish that from the get-go, this had been Stubbs' entire purpose because now Hemsworth is really getting to shine in this role. He did a really great job, I think, at providing some really nice dark humor, but also just giving a lot more layers to Stubbs. You can see that he he feels like a failure. He wanted to protect these hosts, and because that, he is increasingly suicidal throughout this episode, even after Bernard has broken him of his attempt where he, you know, tried to shoot himself in the head. He's still focused on killing himself when they're on that beach. You know, he talks about how he wants to decommission himself um, after they've gotten to their location because he just doesn't feel that he has much of a purpose anymore. So when Bernard decides to reprogram him, well, I do think that is something that Stubbs will eventually find out about. I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing because it gives Stubbs more of a purpose now. It gets him on a better track. Uh, now he's going to feel like he has a purpose. He's not going to be inclined to off himself every few seconds. And so I like that that's where that character is going. Because I feel like it'd be a really frustrating arc, not just because we've already seen that with Teddy, where he just dies like every other episode in season one, I remember, and then season two, he offed himself, but also because it just makes this bond like a lot more interesting in that way. 
but we also get to see a lot more of what really is going on with Bernard right now, because remember, Bernard was brought back by Dolores, but he feels that there might be a code in there. There's something that's not right inside of him, and he doesn't know how to put his finger on it. He doesn't really know how to fully describe it, but I love where they're going with that. I love the scene where He's in the computer, you know, they've hacked into, which I, I was a little bit confused by this. I will say my one thing that I'm still confused by is the park that they were in, you know, park four, as Stubbs referred to it. How is that still around if the Westworld that we saw in Maves was entirely a hallucination? Because it kind of felt like they were in the same place. I don't know if they were trying to mislead us in that way. But that's the one thing I'm just not entirely clear on. Is that we don't really know the state of Westworld right now. And again, considering that we had that whole board meeting of them trying to privatize things... I'm not entirely sure what's actually going on there. That's the one thing that I'm just a little bit lost on. And I've seen this episode twice now, and I'm still confused about where they're really trying to go with all of that, what they're really trying to do there. Um, I, I just, that doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. Um, but I did like how Bernard was able to get into the computer, realize that there's something wrong with his coding, and I'm wondering what that's really all about, if he is actually under Dolores's control in that way, which would not be that shocking considering we found out, of course, in the season two finale that Dolores did, was responsible for building Bernard. She was the one who built him. And so maybe she made an update on in him where he can't, you know, somehow she's going to be able to stifle him. Remember, I said this season, I think this is going to be, the the entire season, I think it's going to be Dolores thinking that she's untouchable, that everything's going to go her way, and I think it is going to come crashing down in some way. Or it could go the other way. It could go that way for Bernard, where there's something that's not right in his code that is going to deter him from you know, um, starting this, you know, basically starting this, uh, resistance of sorts and trying to fight Dolores. Um, uh, maybe there's, there's gonna be something that isn't going to work there. So I'm excited to see where that really is all gonna go. But I also like where their storyline ends with them now trying to track down John Gallagher Jr.'s character, who we know is basically useless at this point. But does that not mean he can help them? Because he very much can. I mean, the, the people that, he saw they took Dolores, they drugged her. So there's still ways that they can use that character. And so I'm excited to see what they really do decide to do with all that. But in terms of story, that's really everything to talk about going on in this episode. So now we're going to get into the technical stuff, which I thought was some of the most impressive of the series in a while, mainly because the directing of this episode was very specific. It started off very familiar in that way. Maeve's loop is something we've seen before. Four. It kind of harkens back to Dolores's loop in season one, where she was going through the same thing over and over again. And I was really worried for a while that that's what they were going to do, only to kind of, um, again, confuse us in that way, kind of mislead us into thinking that's what this episode's going to be, when in reality, the entire thing is a hallucination. It's different. They're they're going in a different direction, and I really loved the way that was done, the familiar music and things like that. It was just very well directed in that way, and when it was eventually revealed that this was a hallucination, I thought the directing was even more impressive, because I did not for a second think that that's what was going on. I knew something was off, but I did not think they were going to go in that direction. I especially did not think it was going to be revealed this early on, but I was pleasantly surprised about that, and I was I was very happy that they decided to do that overall, and I just thought the directing was really good here, but also um, humor-wise, too, there was some really good humor, particularly with Stubbs' character, like I said, just some really great lines in there for sure, but also Maeve and her just being really annoyed and not really caring about anything that's going on in this narrative, just like trying to get out of it I just thought was a lot of fun I love the moment where she's trying to ask the two texts about um you know the uh square root of one and they just like go on and on about it and this is her way of like hacking into like the mainframe of the computer I thought that was just such a great scene and stuff like that I thought was really well done and the writing like I said I thought was just genius in this episode because they did a really good job of 
making you not want this. You know, I kind of feel like that was the goal. Uh, the way I react in the first half of this episode, I feel like that was the response that they wanted in, um, in this episode. And I've said this before, Westworld is a show that is really good with attention to detail. And I watched the behind the scenes video uh, that they do, you know, after every episode. And they talked about how they really tried to make this look as distinctive as possible, where if you notice, when everyone freezes, for example, um, you know, when everyone freezes in this episode, they're literally frozen, like frozen, frozen. Whereas in previous episodes, we know when characters will freeze, action is still going on around them. It's just happening at a very slow rate. So that was a really good way of showing the contrast between the two, how this cannot be real. Something is off in this world because literally everything is frozen. Whereas in the real world, some things are frozen, but action is still going on. So just things like that, I just thought were really well done i was very impressed by like i said the attention to detail there and i just thought they did a really good job with that definitely one of the most uh, impressive parts i think of this episode for me was the writing and just where they're deciding to go with Maeve as a character is really well done. You really do feel her growth throughout this entire episode. Who she is now, the fact that she's gaining more independence, and then to have that almost completely stripped away from her now through the character of Ciroc, um, I think it's just a really great place to take her as a character. And again, it's different. It's not her trying to find her daughter, which I'm so happy about. I'm so happy that they are not doing that because it just would feel tiring. And I'm glad that they're going in a completely different direction. So I like where that is headed overall, but the cinematography as well in this episode was fantastic, particularly the aspect ratios were amazing in this episode. I love that once Maeve realized that something was off, that it looked like The Forge because we know, and they talked about this in the behind the scenes video, The Forge, you know, when, when the show is in a, um, is in a widescreen aspect ratio in that way. That is the format that we know that this is the Forge. This is when things are not real. It also, the for if you remember, that also was applied to the mislead they did with Dolores and Bernard in season two. It was in widescreen. So that's just a cue that this is not real, that this is, this is not actually happening in this way. So I just thought that was such a genius move. I love that the rest of the time we focus on Maeve, it is in this widescreen screen format and I, I thought that they did a really great job with the cinematography and things like that and there were just so many great shots in this episode and the action scenes especially uh, were fantastic here, whether it was the fan the really thrilling opening with everything going on with Hector and Maeve, and also the way they were revealed, I forgot to say, in terms of the writing, the way they were revealed what was actually going on there, very slowly revealing it, first making you think that Hector is alive and well, but then making you realize, no, there's something off there, I thought was really great. So that I thought was a great action sequence, but the best one had to be the one towards the end with like those robots of sorts. That was amazing. I love the way that was done. They did a really great job uh, just really giving you that tension throughout that scene, really putting you on edge. And I would just, I absolutely loved everything going on there. That was such a great uh, sequence for sure. There also was a very interesting visual cue that I know you guys want me to talk about. The Game of Thrones cue in this episode. I was a little bit mixed on it at first. I thought that it was kind of stupid at first, and I was like, oh, really? But then when I rewatched it, it's very subtle. It's not something that's in your face. It's just kind of something that they've joked about doing for a while. And I feel like because this episode was so bonkers in that way with just how off everything was, it just kind of made sense to throw that in there. But... That also doesn't work for me because this went on with Bernard and Stubbs, not in the fictional world that Maeve had that was in Maeve's mind and things like that. So I don't know. I'm a bit mixed on that. Um, I think it's a cool idea. I just don't really know if it worked overall, but again, overall cinematography was very strong here. Score as well. I loved again that they played the familiar Westworld score, but then when we reveal was going on, it was that very futuristic score that we heard throughout uh, last week's episode, and I, I really did love that for sure. And then the way the episode was edited as well, I thought was really well done. The way they make you think that Bernard and Stubbs are in the same place as Maeve and all of them. I I thought was really cool. I liked the way that was handled for sure. So again, there's a lot I really did love about this episode. Again, the only thing that holds it back is just me not really being in love with the first half and me just being generally confused at 
how Bernard and Stubbs were in this park if it wasn't actually real. I was just a little bit thrown off by that. And again, maybe when we know more about what's actually going on with Westworld, then I'll understand it more. Because at least to me, it seemed like last week that Westworld is basically up for auction at this point. That they're looking for new people to take it because it's just not, it's not fulfilling its original purpose anymore and so they're trying to privatize it and all that kind of stuff so we'll have to see where that really does go i'm also really excited to see both of these storylines intersect you know mave and Sirac and then bernard and Stubbs. Uh, i like that they are separated this season but i also like that they're in pairs it's not just mave on her own journey and then bernard on his own journey like they they have someone with them and i think the interplay between bernard and Stubbs is going to keep that storyline a lot of fun and same with mave and Sirac. i'm excited to see more of what's going on there for sure and i like that this episode didn't actually have anything with dolores or caleb because you know they're doing a good job of saving that for the next episode it also seems like next week we're actually going to find out who is in charlotte's uh body who what host is actually inhabiting it i'm excited to see where that does go overall but overall, guys, I definitely was a fan of this episode. Like I said, well, there were a couple things that I was a bit iffy on. At the end of the day, I definitely was a pretty big fan of this episode. So I am going to give this episode of Westworld Season 3, Episode 2, the winter tale overall in A-. minus. But overall, guys, in my review of this episode of Westworld, let me know what you guys saw this episode overall. Love your thoughts, and we'll see you guys in my next video, and we'll see you guys for that. Okay, bye.